live from our studios in Brooklyn, New York. It's the Cool Jew Show! Bringing you the cool Jews of the world. Brought to you by the best Jewish site for entertainment and news, www.thecooljew.com. I'm your host, Joseph Scheidler, a.k.a. Webmaster. Tonight is the 26th of Adar, 5768, and March 2nd, 2008. Today's show is sponsored in part by the Kingston Barber. Are you in the Crown Heights area? Do you need a good professional haircut? Then let David Chazan take care of you. David, who is originally from Paris, is skillfully trained and has formerly cut the hair of many famous people. Now he's right here in your neighborhood, and for around $10, he'll take care of your hair today. David also does shadows and wash sets for great prices. Give him a call at 718-756-6265. Again, that number is 718-756-6265. Or just stop in the store located right on Kingston Avenue at 335 Kingston. Again, that's 335 Kingston. Let David take care of all your hair needs. Visit the Kingston Barber. Today's special guest is Rabbi Yisrael Moshe Ort, who will be speaking about his experience going from a college student to a Chabad college campus rabbi. And after Rabbi Ort, we'll have some music, news, weather, and more. Please be advised that while we were recording, we had some technical difficulties with the first minute or two, and therefore it may sound a little bit scratchy to you, but it does clear up after that. With that said, we present to you this week's edition of The Cool Jew Show. Welcome back to the studios of the Cool Jew. There is a talk from the Lubavitcher Rebbe in the year of 1988, where he talked about the connection of the three parshas, Vayetze, Vayishlach, Vayeshev, and he said there's a lesson to be derived from these three parshas, where Vayetze means departed, Vayishlach means sent, Vayeshev means settled down. And explains over there that Vayet seem to go out of your own settings to depart from who you are and go out on a shlitha, go out on a endeavor to change the world. And Vayet means take that endeavor and make more people in turn change the world further, which brings to the first of complete changed world. We have on the line with us now, Rabbi Yisrael Moshe Ort, a bunch now has taken the of being able to depart it on a shlitha himself. Rabbi Ort, the mind. Rabbi Ort, the Evening, thank you. Welcome on the show. Thank you. A Baal Shuba of Mithi now a place in Denver, Colorado. So, for us to do this, we're going to live at the door of the Mithi in Baal Shuba and we're going to walk out to other spiritual journey. So, I'm wondering if you can, you know, fill us a little bit about your life story about growing up and who you acted with Claude and how you got into all this. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I was a student there and a friend of mine who took me, uh, by Chabad. And uh, we were in the process of starting up the level. And uh, we uh, went to various synagogues. Uh, one of the synagogues that really did uh, a lot of stuff with us and really took time and put a lot of effort into uh, working with us was the uh, Chabad Synagogue. Mm-hmm. So you were then attending college there? Or, I mean, how did you... Uh- Yes, I was attending college, actually, uh, at University of Central Florida. I had switched there from University of Florida in Gainesville, and I switched to University of Central Florida, and uh, they did not have any active Jewish organization when I got to Orlando, Florida. When I got to Orlando, Florida, you know, I wanted to get uh, be as involved as I was when I was at uh, University of Florida, and so uh, I started looking into getting uh, getting involved with the Jewish organization. And so as part of that process, I wanted to get involved with this Jewish student uh, union. And uh, then uh, through that, I met a good friend of mine, John Edelstein, from uh, Miami. And uh, together we basically became the president and vice president of the organization. And from there... We started making connections in the in the community, and uh, one of the places that really did a lot of stuff for us was the uh, Chabad. 
So that was kind of like my first intro to orthodoxy and to uh, Hasidus in particular. So growing up, I mean, were you affiliated with anything Jewish? Did you have any Jewish involvement? Did you attend any youth group synagogues? Uh, what was your... Sure, I was involved with the Jacksonville Jewish Center. Uh, pretty much most of my uh, life growing up, I uh, it's the uh, conservative Jewish Center in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, where my uh, parents moved from Queens, New York. And uh, we were like we were decently active. I wouldn't call us incredibly active. Uh, pretty much, uh, I didn't even complete Hebrew school uh, growing up. And uh, my uh, I was bar mitzvahed actually in Israel because I had not uh, completed the Hebrew school. They didn't even want to bar mitzvah me at the uh, at the conservative place where I went to. Mm-hmm. So. You had uh, <clears throat> taken up a journey um, that uh, you know you get to college and you get more involved with Judaism over there. So, I mean, how was you know uh, your you know initial reaction when you started getting involved with Chabad? What was your you know uh, reaction? How did you take to it? Well, actually, I didn't really put too much into it. Actually, my friends seemed to be much more gung ho about Chabad than I was. Uh, I just kind of initially went by. I mean, obviously, it was uh, always wonderful, the, uh, the, the, the atmosphere, the food, uh, the Lahayams always was a pretty popular thing, and uh, also the rabbis seemed pretty cool, but initially I wasn't so much into it. So you have, uh, t- you take, uh, took your journey, and from... This uh, Chabad Center, where is where, this is in Jacksonville? You're telling me this center? Uh, no, no. The uh, the uh, I grew up in Jacksonville, but the place where I got introduced to Chabad was actually in Orlando, Florida, by Rabbi Dubov. Rabbi Dubov. In uh, yeah. In Orlando. By the university uh, there. Well, actually, it's somewhat near the university. It's in Orlando, Florida, which is where University of Central Florida is. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can tell our listeners out there some of your memories of you know being over there. Or anything that particularly you remember about that? Um, well, uh, you mean just being in Orlando in general, or you mean particularly the Chabad over there? Uh, anything you want to share with our listeners out there? Well, I mean, Orlando was a lot of fun. Certainly Disney World and everything else. You had your share of attractions. But uh, one of the things that I guess really impressed me a lot was about the, uh, I guess you could say the... Um, the openness of the rabbi there, you know, really inviting me into his home. Uh, probably the biggest thing that made the impression on me was when uh, when I needed a particular advice on something, and I said, well, you know, Rabbi Dubov had always struck me as a, uh, as a very intelligent guy and uh, a very learned individual and someone that I, I would definitely trust his advice on something. So... I went to him, he spent actually a few hours talking to me, and uh, which, by the way, was pretty much unheard of in the uh, of the rabbi doing that in the synagogue I grew up in, and I was going to make a donation to him. And uh, instead of accepting the donation, he said uh, he would rather I come agree to come for uh, Shabbos. He would forego the donation, which was now even more unheard of, uh, and uh, I said, okay, if that's the, if that's what you want, I'll uh, come by for Shabbos. And so I, I uh, started kind of started my journey from there. I was very impressed by his integrity, and uh, just really where I could kind of explore about Judaism, but I didn't feel judged. I didn't feel like there was any kind of strings attached, but that I could kind of just come by and explore. So. From there, I understand you took your journey off to a Baal Shuvi Yeshiva Hadar Torah, is that correct? Yes. So how did you make that move to go from uh, being in uh, college? What were you studying then? Uh, computer science. So you took the move from being involved in studying computer science, and you traveled to a Baal Shuvi, uh Yeshiva in uh, New York, Crown Heights, Hadar Torah. So how did you end up taking that move? Well, uh, initially, actually, uh, I was supposed to go to a different uh, Lubavitch Yeshiva, but I guess they were kind of concerned about if I was, you know, really committed or serious and so forth, and uh, uh, I initially was supposed to go to to a different one, and uh, because of, they, they basically, you know, I was like, well, 
I think I'm pretty serious, but I guess I, I didn't know what the whole process was supposed to be, and so because of that, it kind of got put on the back burner. And then uh, later on, various things kind of came together, and, uh, you know, I wound up hearing about Hadar Torah. And when I called them up, uh, you know, I said, well, yeah, I'd like to come in a few months, and actually I'd like to save up a little bit more money so, you know, to pay my way through and so forth. And they said, no, 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 don't worry about it, you know, just come. I mean, obviously they need the money, but I'm not saying that it was uh, that I didn't pay anything. But what I am saying is that there was this feeling of, like, come right now, we'll figure out all the things later on, but if you wait, then maybe perhaps you won't even come at all. So it was this very welcoming feeling, and once I actually got to New York, when I actually uh, kind of, well, basically dropped everything, when I got there, it was just very much this feeling of being welcome, of being part of, uh, kind of part of a family. I mean, here was a whole bunch of other guys from very, very different backgrounds, but all going kind of through the same thing, and we were like in it together. So it was uh, definitely a really awesome feeling. So, I mean, this is uh, very odd. What made you make that move to go from being a student in college to wanting to go spend time in a yeshiva in a community that wears black hats and you know an ultra orthodox community what made you uh, make that move to go you know in that direction well before i even went up to i already kind of i guess uh been to a few uh what they call pagishas a few uh uh, things with the Lubavitch Youth Organization where they have various speakers. The whole basically a Shabbaton for the whole weekend. And, uh, I'd already kind of graduated to, you know, wearing suits and the black hat and that kind of stuff. But one of the things I realized is that I didn't have a, uh, kind of background of how to learn. Like I had a lot of books that I read, uh, very intensely and, uh, was picking up a lot of different things and learning a lot. But it's a whole different thing when you can open up a book in the Hebrew, in the Aramaic, or Yiddish, and then to just pick up one of these books and learn directly from that. And also, I mean, various things in the, in the Talmud and Halacha to be able to understand how to learn. Not necessarily to get the knowledge that, that comes along with it, but to actually understand how to learn the format of things, the proper approach and understanding and the proper framework with which to base that understanding, which I think is is, is very important. And that's, that's probably the biggest thing that motivated me to, uh, to come to Yeshiva. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your experience in Yeshiva. What was it like? Uh, did it meet your expectations? Did you accomplish there? You know, who were the staff over there? Uh, well, uh, well, for one thing, it, I'd say it exceeded my expectations. I mean, I didn't have much except that I wanted to learn how to learn. Uh, but I got a lot more, I'd say, because uh, in addition to learning how to learn, uh, there were Fabrangans, in which I had an unbelievable time at the Fabrangans. There's also, we had, uh, we have, the, the teachers were amazing and very caring. Uh, Rabbi Goldberg, of course, everyone knows that the, the Reb referred to him as a uh, Talmud Chacham. Rabbi and of course, Goldberg I, is the Rosh Hashiva of Dar Torah, correct? The, yeah, Rabbi Goldberg is the Rosh Hashiva, the head of the Yeshiva. And, uh, you know, if I say he's a Talmud Chacham, uh, you know, it doesn't mean there's so much coming from me. But uh, to, for the Rebbe to say that, obviously, uh, is a very, the Rebbe did mince words, so uh, we see the seriousness of that and... Uh, you you just you ask them a question and to be able to go to someone and ask them a question and for them to answer you so readily as if you had uh, you know asked him the question weeks earlier and he had been preparing the answer it was it's it's a tremendous thing. Uh, Rabbi Wurzberg also extreme you know himself uh, used to be a student and now is a teacher in Mashpia there and extremely learned. And, uh, very Hasidish and, 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 and the Makusha to the Rebbe. And, uh, you know, the, you have such a wonderful faculty. You have, uh, Rabbi Azdaba, uh, Rabbi Uncle Azdaba, the son of the, uh, of the head of the Basin in Sebek of, uh, Crown Heights. And, you know, you have such amazing, uh, staff. It, that, that's an incredible plus. And then on top of it, we have something we do every Friday along with 
you know, all the yeshivas in, uh, you know, in Crown Heights and so forth. Then on Fridays, we got on the Soyam. We would go out, you know, get, uh, take the subway into Manhattan or into Queens or wherever and, uh, go and, uh, tell other Jews about Judaism. And the, those experiences, even alone, aside from the education, the experiences of connecting with Jews that you, you never met before, might never meet again, and talking to them about their heritage, about their, their holy Jewish neshama, uh, those were probably the, some of the most, uh, profound experiences on me, and certainly, I'd say, uh, equal to the other education. I often would say that the, what we learn the rest of the week would be, uh, part of the education, that'd be the theory, and then when we go out on Fridays to go, uh, uh, Mesoyim, that would be the actual application. Mm-hmm. So, so it, it definitely exceeded my uh, expectations, uh, tremendously, and, uh, you know, it was, I, I probably had one of the, uh, probably the best time of my life, more so than any other time. I mean, even in college, uh, you know, I had a lot of friends in college, but never did I feel as close as I felt to uh, my, uh, you know, fellow students in Hadar Torah, my friends, basically, in Hadar Torah. I still keep in touch with all of them, and even people that are there now that I never met before, I consider, like, like my family. It's, 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 it's an amazing feeling that I never had before, even in college. And uh, although I was roughing it much more than I did in college, it's, it's uh, certainly, you know, because it's not the grand uh, living quarters, although it's actually much nicer now, but uh, you, somehow that doesn't matter. You, you learn to appreciate the uh, the amazing connections that you gain, not only with the, the, the faculty, of course, but also with, the, you know, the other people who are attending and even with people you meet, as I said, on, on Friday. It, it, was, it was an amazing experience. So, how long were you in Hadar Torah for? A few years. Okay. So, um, you know, when you graduated there, you had smicha, rabbinical ordination, or I mean, how did that go? Uh, they don't they don't give that out at Hadar Torah. You have to go to seven seventy for that. They used to actually give out smicha there. So, where did your path lead you from there? After Hadar Torah, after you were there for several years studying and getting yourself familiar with uh, Jewish customs, traditions, and building your skills and learning, where did you take your path next? Well, basically, uh, my path next was, uh, you know, obviously at 770, and also uh, I started working again, actually, because my intent initially was not to uh, go out on shlichus. I I didn't uh, initially see myself doing that, only because before I came to Adar Torah, I had already graduated college and started working. Actually, I even started working before even graduating college. And uh, so I didn't know if that was necessarily meant for me. And uh, initially, for my consultations with uh, Rabbi Goldberg, he didn't necessarily see me doing that. Mm-hmm. So and I, and I told him I had to feel like I should get out and start working again. So... He was masking on that, although with the understanding that I still, while in New York, come by the Shiva as much as possible uh, and continue to learn. Uh, But uh, I started working again, and uh, actually I started working at the World Trade Center, of all places, for uh, about three months. And then uh, I started, then at the end of that is when I met my wife, uh, I guess at the time wife-to-be, and uh, then I uh, switched to a job which ultimately moved us to Houston, Texas. And uh, it was actually with an energy trading company and uh, another, comp- another thing on the news. And uh, that company didn't do as well because, uh, you know, there's all this, uh, I guess, scrutiny on, um, uh, on energy trading and that kind of stuff, and so ultimately, so, I wound up leaving that company. So why and you're in uh, here. why you're in Texas? You got involved with uh, the Shliach over there. Um, what is his name? Rabbi, Rabbi Lazarov. Rabbi Lazarov. Uh, any experience over there? I mean, you're, you're now coming from Crown Heights. You're, um, you know, now by this time, I'm imagining your full 
you know, fully religious, going you know all the way full full fledged, and you're moving to uh, Texas. How did that you know uh, how, how did that change over from being now you know several years in an environment of complete Judaism, and mo- moving back out to an environment that well, actually Houston, Texas, I have to tell you, Rabbi Lazarus. Not only was the environment of uh, of observance, but it was actually a very Hasidic environment. Uh, very, he's a very, very, as I, I would say, stark with Lubavitchkeit. And uh, pretty much, if you were in his shul and there was a certain thing done in his shul, you could assume that that is the proper custom as a Lubavitcher should do it, even if you did not know yourself. That's how stark uh, he was with uh, Lubavitch uh, observances and so forth. So it was, a, you know, other than the fact that, you know, the, you're not in a place where you see, you know, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people on Friday night walking home, uh, at the same time, in that shul, almost everybody had a black hat, uh, had a black hat and as I said, uh, very, very uh, strict on on all of Bobbitt's observances, including, you know, the the food, the drink, the, uh, the way that uh, the davening, everything. It was uh, very, very strict. So I, I really didn't have to do without too much after moving there. Mm-hmm. So then you uh, left this company and you started a new job in Denver. Yeah, they, they, a, a company from, uh, actually from Colorado Springs contacted me. Uh-huh. So you but I didn't want to move to Colorado Springs because Colorado Springs... Uh, uh, I consulted again, as a person should properly do, with my Mashpia. And uh, he felt that, uh, you know, a place where there not be a minion on Shabbos, being where I was holding, unless I was uh, a shliach there, there's no reason that I should be in, in a community that doesn't have a, uh, a minion on Shabbos, at least, for, especially said for the children. Mm-hmm. So I worked out a deal with them in Colorado Springs with the company, to uh, work part of the week here in Denver and part of the week in Colorado Springs, and they seemed amicable to it. Mm-hmm. And so uh, thus they brought me out, and uh, that's what brought me here. And while here, uh, I was approached by Rabbi Kopak and Rabbi Engel about uh, doing some, some work with the college campus. And that's ultimately what turned into a shlichus uh, so how did, here. So how did this whole thing start? They they approached you. They said that they'd like you to. Um, now, uh, now you're involved with uh, Auraria Campus, correct? Yes. Okay, so Auraria Campus is located where then? Auraria Campus is located where it's in downtown Denver. Downtown Denver. So is there any shlich there in downtown Denver? Or are you the only one? I mean, who else is you know working over there? Uh, there's none in downtown Denver, although I think downtown itself is also under Rabbi Engel, and I'm specifically at the campus. Uh huh. So you took up uh, on the request to start doing some activities over there, and you know how did this grow? You know, I, I've I've seen uh, you on several different uh, news stations, uh, you know, or different in news sites about you know uh, activities you've done over there. How did this develop to be you know like a full fledged? Uh, you know, Chabad house over there. How is that going? Uh, well, we don't have a Chabad house specifically located over there. We actually run it out of our home, as many shluchim at least initially do. Uh, in our case, it's also a little bit different because it is a commuter campus, unlike a campus where there are dormitories and so forth, where it's it's more necessary to have a, uh, a Chabad house actually at the site. Um Although, at the same time, we enjoy being able to, you know, we've had uh, tables out many times on campus, you know, to, you know, have to put on tefillin on people and to give out Shabbos candles and to talk to people and let them know there is a Jewish presence on campus. We've had uh, menorah lightings. Actually, last, that's a little tougher to do because of the timing when the semester lights out, but uh, last uh Last Hanukkah, we were able to do a menorah lighting right on campus, which is the first one I think that has ever been done there. We've had Megillah readings on campus. Uh, we've uh, had uh, various events downtown as well. And, uh, you know, it's just something where it's about getting out, making connections, meeting Jews over there, and uh, letting them enjoy a... Uh, 
a Jewish presence and a Jewish social life uh, associated with their campus experience because, and especially, I think it's even more important for a commuter campus because, let's say you go somewhere like University of Florida, uh, where I attended, uh, in Gainesville before I went to Orlando, you know, you have tremendous, uh, Jewish presence there. So, the opportunities to be involved in Jewish things are very, very, uh, you know, there's a lot of them. But uh, here on a community campus, it's hard to get that feeling. It's hard for people to really get involved with things as much because, you know, the typical commuter campus person is working full-time and going to school, whereas at another campus, at most, they're working part-time. So, you know, for people to get involved and to really get things off the ground, it's very difficult for them. And so that's where we come in, and we've worked with the faculty and with the administration there as well as with many students in order to make a Jewish presence on campus, to have a Jewish organization there, and to make Jews aware that, yes, they can also feel at home and, and to have a, a Jewish social life uh, in their college experience as well. So how has the uh, Jewish presence over there taken up to you being there? Uh, pretty well, actually. Uh, ironically, uh, one of their biggest helps is the fact that there happens to be a certain individual uh, if the uh, espouses uh, non-Jewish views, but he, he tries to say he's Jewish, uh, one of the uh, J for J people. And uh, uh, Jews, you know, being constantly, uh, uh, I don't know how else to say it, harassed by this individual and by uh, the people that are with him, uh, it kind of like brings out their Judaism and makes them really want that there should be something Jewish on campus. And uh, many people have, you know, t told me, actually even non-Jews have told me that they really appreciate having an authentic Jewish presence at the campus. And uh, I've, I've had a lot of positive reactions. Uh, usually the, the thing I usually get for most people is, oh, wow, I wish I would have more time. I would come to some of these really, really great events. But I've never had anyone who is uh, upset at what we were doing or anything like that. Uh, people have been very, very wonderfully receptive and, and really wonderful for, uh, to us. Not just uh, Jewish people, but also uh, non-Jewish people on campus have been extremely receptive and very, uh, very, very inclusive of what we're doing. Hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about some of your activities that you're doing, a little bit more detail. Uh, is there anything in particular, any um, yeah, well, activity? Well, or forum's just... coming up here. What are you guys doing over there for Forum? Well, uh, Porn will be having activity downtown that will involve uh, uh, some live bands uh, that we'll be uh, putting together uh, for people to enjoy some live entertainment and also, uh, you know, as part of their celebration. And also we'll be having the guild readings there downtown. Uh, probably will not be having them on campus this year because this year it happens to coincide with spring break. So uh, this particular year, we probably will not have campus readings, but uh, almost every other year we uh, we do have readings on campus of various locations. And uh, we will also be bringing down some people to help to uh, make things more lively and entertaining and so forth. So uh, it should be pretty exciting. Uh, pace Lock will also be pretty exciting. We're going to have expect a pretty good turnout, pretty good crowd for that. And we're going to not only invite uh, our students, but also their families want to come join us because Pesach is obviously a very family-oriented time. Um, and we expect to have a pretty good turnout for the um, Sadarim and for the meals. And uh, also we, we expect to give away a pretty good amount of uh, Shmore Matzah as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, wait, or... Being that you are a Balshuva, do you find that that you know helps you in you know relating to the students who are not from a religious background? I think it kind of helps me to understand where they're coming from to a certain extent. I mean, at the same time, as a shliach, I think you have to be wary of the risk of uh, trying to be uh, you know not to knock uh, the cool Jew side or anything, but uh, you don't want to be too cool. You got to be cool. You got to be cool in in terms of of uh, making it known that uh, uh, being from is the cool thing, and not necessarily that we want to try to be that we want to try to be cool from a standpoint of like becoming like yeah, identify and so forth. It has to be more like uh, accepting people for where they're at. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. not be, not being judgmental. And uh, so I think that was some of the that was probably one of the biggest things that really got me to investigate becoming more observant and to really go with it uh, and 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 to really get into it was the fact that I didn't feel any uh, pressure or any type of uh, uh, um, judgment or expectation. I just felt okay. Here's just a warm, inviting atmosphere that I feel comfortable in, and I think I take those experiences that made me feel positive about not only Judaism in, in, in general, but about uh, Hasidus in particular, and I try to, you know, incorporate that and give that over to other people as well. Mm -hmm. So, do you so I think it's definitely been an advantage. So you then give classes on campus, or, I mean, how does that go? We have classes typically out of our house. Uh, sometimes we do classes on campus, and we have done classes on campus. Uh, and the, we are in the process of uh, acquiring uh, some space uh, next to campus that will be able to uh, have, you know, uh, b uh, big uh, Friday night dinners, uh, and also to have classes at. And that's that's what we're in the process of acquiring right now. Um, but uh, yeah, we we have had classes there. But a lot of times, our main classes have been at our home. And actually, now we do a class uh, one night a week. I I, I do a class with uh, Rabbi Abaya from the Bukharian synagogue because there's a lot of Bukharian students that attend uh, Orary campus, and so it just seemed natural. And Rabbi Abaya is a great guy, a great rabbi, and uh, so uh, the two of us we forbring with the Bukharian students, the Bukharian guys on uh, Tuesday night at the Or Avner uh, Synagogue. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, being that you're on Shlokas, you have a lot of events come up. Do you have any um, inspiring stories for us, any stories, uh, any type of miracles that happened to you, anything that you would say interesting that, you know, you would like to share with the listeners out there? Um, well, i say one I can think of is uh, actually when I was first starting out. My first uh foray onto campus I had no idea who to contact no one told me any leads whatsoever I had no idea any faculty uh that anybody who worked there in the faculty and so I uh I called up and I uh, got the number actually for I think it was student activities at Metro and so I was you know, talking to them, I said, yeah, well, I'm a local uh, rabbi of the community, and I wanted to see about starting up a Jewish organization there, and I'm not sure, is there any way, is there any Jewish organization or anything Jewish there, is there anyone that I could talk to? And they said, no, no, there's, there's nothing like that at all. And I said, you know, are you sure? And, you know, I just seemed kind of a little, a little down about it because I had tried making several calls before. And all of a sudden, she said, well, you know, there was someone who was involved a while ago and uh, there was something Jewish going on and I could give you his name and it turned out that the uh, professor that they gave me the name for it, he had worked with uh, a rabbi who used to be here by the name of Rabbi Cohen and Rabbi Cohen used to do things at the university and so this person happened to remember that particular individual, this particular professor and then gave me his number and then after Talking with him, I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I wanted to gauge, you know, not only how he felt about, uh, you know, religious, but also how he'd feel about Lubavitch. I was a little nervous, and so he told me, he, for one of the first questions he asked me, he said, are you Lubavitch? And I was, like, kind of concerned. Maybe he's asking me that uh, maybe uh, not positively. So I said, but, you know, I'm not going to hide that. So I said, yes, so yes, absolutely, I'm Lubavitch. I'm a Lubavitch rabbi. And so... Uh, he said, oh, excellent, excellent. So if we're going to start any Jewish thing on this campus, it has to be, uh, Lubavitch has to be involved. He was very, very uh, pro-Lubavitch, and uh, it just seemed like all these doors, whenever I had any doubts, the doors would open up. And indeed, uh, I mean, I would say even throughout my life I've seen that, but especially I've seen that on Shlichus where there were times when things looked a little bleak or looked a little dark, and there were these big tests, and then all of a sudden, you would see, like, the, the brachas of the Rebbe to a shliach, to be matzliach, to be successful. If, if a shliach really wants to, to be successful, you see the brachas of the Rebbe coming through, and then, like, the doors just open up. 
Maybe you can and, elaborate on yeah. that. Any, you know, any further stories on that? Any particular stories? Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, any particular miraculous things or just... Uh, you know, you're saying how doors opened up to you uh, when you didn't expect them to. Yeah, I mean, of course, as many shluchim uh, understand, you know, things look a little dark, and then, you know, especially in terms of funding or stuff like that, and then you make a certain connection and so forth, or you meet someone, or I've had in mind, let's say, like, for instance, I was thinking about this thing downtown, and it just recently someone uh, mentioned to me about someone that uh, I should contact for a place downtown, and they actually brought it up to me, like, maybe I should have something downtown and, you know, like, even before I had a chance to open my mouth, it was already, the bracha was already fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, these type of things I see a lot. The other thing also, which is really amazing, is, uh, you know, David Garovich Gav- just recently got, uh, he got married, and uh, to see, learn, and then go off to, go off to Hadar Torah himself, and then to become married... And you see, like, all these things, to me, that's also very miraculous. To me, I, that's really amazing. I mean, it's no less amazing than my own journey and the own things that I was involved with. And so, you know, these are these are just some of the many miracles we see. And as miracles, I, uh, 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 the being able to do things on campus and doors opening up, uh, such as our, our Hanukkah event, that uh, different things start opening up. And we weren't even, you know, able to get initially an organization started this past semester because they kind of changed the rules on us a little bit. And then we went from that to only getting it started, but we also got this whole menorah put on campus and we got email sent out and all through the university. It was really amazing stuff. But then there's also through the students. I mean, the students uh, themselves, the journey they're taking, no different than the journey I took, uh, wherever it leads them is all also a very miraculous thing, and uh, I think also very inspirational. Mm-hmm. So you just recently, just this past Shabbos, had at your house a Thailand Shabbos. Tell us about that. Thai Shabbat, but Thai was optional. But uh, but it was Thai called Thai Shabbat, and uh, we uh, you know many uh, Chabad Shulchan have uh, we call themed uh, Shabboses and. Uh, the uh, you know they have kind of around the world kind of thing going on and we decided okay let's give it a shot and uh, it turned out really really well uh, Thai Thai food is definitely not the most uh, kosher food to say the least uh, involving lots of shellfish pork and everything else so my wife actually found a vegetarian Thai cookbook and from that she was able to put together amazing recipes that were very authentic I mean sans the non kosher ingredients. Uh, but were really, really authentic, and you know we had uh, the uh, authentic like Chinese spoons out and the chopsticks and the whole bit. Uh, it was uh, really a lot of fun, and everyone had a really, re- really, really great time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, is this your first time doing this, or I mean, doing a theme Shabbat? Yeah. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by theme Shabbat. We also uh, every year we do a particular Shabbat we call. Uh, uh, one one world, one Shabbat, one Shabbat, one world, and it's the idea of uh, unity and the idea of all the Jews being like one soul, and that ultimately through observing an entire uh, Shabbos uh, together, that we, you know, it says that if all the Jews would observe, observe one more Shabbos together, we observe one complete Shabbos before, we observe one more complete Shabbos that will uh, usher in the heir of Mashiach. We also know that Shabbos is main uh, Yomot Mashiach. It's a uh, it's a taste of the time of Mashiach because at that time we won't have to worry about you know working and so forth. We'll dedicate ourselves to to higher pursuits, and uh, so similarly that whole theme we talked about that whole theme, and uh, every year we do that the one Shabbat one world because we really like the idea of unity and of everyone coming together, and I think that's something that's very big in the world right now where people talk about the idea of octus, of unity, and of coming together and not being so separate, and I think uh, it really resonated with the students, so that's another one that we do as well. So what are your plans for the future, then? For what? 
for the future? Where do you see your center growing? Well, I see us getting a lot more involved with the uh, university and making more and more inroads. We're doing it slowly but surely. And we're talking about a university, actually three universities, that uh, typically the the campus is very, shall we say, non-religious. I mean, they have a lot. They definitely have their share of missionaries trying to come on campus, but the university itself, in terms of having chaplains and other things, is not at that stage right now. So, you know, I just see us as making more inroads with them and uh, and definitely being there for the Jewish students on campus to provide as much as possible uh, an increased amount uh, a Jewish uh, college experience and, uh, and, uh, and also a chance for them to really explore their heritage as well in the process because, you know, uh, when people are in college, they... It's all about exploration. It's all about exploring who one is, you know, one's identity in addition to, you know, learning new things themselves as well. And it really kind of, you know, they break away from everything, that their their comfort zones and everything, and they go off to college. Well, here's a time where they can break away from the comfort zones and everything that they know uh, externally and to kind of explore within themselves and about their own heritage. So it's, it's a really unique an opportune time, and we'd like to be there to uh, offer them an authentic uh, understanding of Judaism. Mm -hmm. So, Rabbi Ort, summing up here, what would you say is the key factor driving you? What did you say? What would you say your message is to the world that you'd like to bring out from, you know, being a Balchuva and going all the way to being a Chabad Shliach on a campus, um, you know, returning the uh, cycle and, you know, fulfilling what I said in the beginning, going from Vayetze to Vayishlach to Vayeshev, you know, moving yourself forward to, you know, the level where you're bringing out more shalom. You've had uh, some Balchuvas yourself. What would you say your greatest message is to the, uh, you know, to to the world and what your driving force is? Well, my driving force is definitely the Rebbe, because if it wasn't for the Rebbe, there would not be a shliach on the land of Florida, and I would not have. Uh, had the opportunity to become observant, at least as far as, I mean, there's always the what-if situation, but as far as I know, I would never have an opportunity to have become observant. And additionally, not have an opportunity to uh, attach myself to the ways of Hasidus, to the, the, the teachings of Hasidus and the ways of Hasidus, which, you know, as one person once said, you know, you don't have to be Hasidic to be, uh, to be observant. And you know, and they would said this. They said this to one of my students, and I said this to him. I said, you know, they're right. I said, you don't need to go to your job and uh, enjoy it either. You just have to work. But that's not the type of work that I want to do. The type of work that I want to do is one where I love what I do. I have a highest a life liveliness in what I do, and that's what I want to impart into other people about the Judaism. That Judaism isn't something about where you just do it because. I want to impart to them that this is an amazing opportunity. And the way to really get that across like no other is through the teachings of Hasidus. And the other thing also Hasidus teaches is that a person is a lamplighter. Every Jew is a lamplighter. And a lamplighter, when as soon as, first of all, number one, is the Rebbe taught that a lamplighter has the flame within them. It is only that when someone applies their flame, their warmth, they share that warmth of Hasidus with the other Jew, that it brings out the flame that's already within them. It doesn't introduce a new flame, but it brings out the flame that's already within them. And once they do that, then they have the obligation to go and to share that warmth with others. And everyone has obligation, even if it's just uh, at this point only revealing a small flame. They still have the obligation to go and teach others and to have a positive effect. And I think that that's something that motivates me. That's something imparted to me uh, by the Rebbe through Rabbi Dubov. And that's something where I hope to impart that to others to go out there and to go make a difference in the world. It's not just the uh, Shulchem, but that every person themselves, the Rebbe said, a shliach of a shliach is a shliach. An emissary of an emissary is an emissary. So that everyone should have a part in making the world a better place and ultimately bringing about the era of perfection that we've been waiting thousands of years for, which is the era of Mashiach. Well, Rabbi Ort, we appreciate you coming on the show this evening, and uh, 
We wish you uh, lots of success on your endeavors in the uh, Auraria campus. Amen. Have a good evening, and again, thank you for being on the show. Hey, thank you. Be well. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. You've been listening to Rabbi Yisrael Moshe Ort here on the Cool Jew Show. And now we will head over to the Weather Center to find out the weather for this coming week. This week, Brooklyn area, we have tonight mostly clear, high of unknown, and low of 31. Monday, sunny, 54 is the high, 46 the low. Tuesday, showers, 54 the high, 48 the low. Wednesday, light rain and the wind, 52 the high, 35 the low. Thursday, partly cloudy, 47 the high, 36 the low. Few showers on Friday, 42 the high, 32 the low. Shabbos, partly cloudy, 42 the high, 31 the low. And bring you back the next Sunday, we'll have mostly sunny, 42 the high, 35 the low. And that will bring us to next week on the Cool Jew. Over to the news center. On the top of the cool June, we have some interesting articles. We have the Misha Nechnas Adar song coming from a non-Jew. Is it true? Find out on the cool Jew. Bowl Green opens a new bank in the Borough Park area. Check that out. Israel kills 47 terrorists over the weekend. We have the Ichikaduzi producer leaving the Brooklyn area have an interesting uh, video about Shabbos services in an interesting place. And this week in Denver, Colorado, you have lawmakers fighting on the behalf of Jewish athletes who want to play a basketball game, but can't because it's going to be on Shabbos. That's right, a basketball team at the Herzl Rama campus in Denver has been forced to cut themselves out from a championship game because of Shabbos. That story on the Cool Jew. Also, we have final cancellation, word of cancellation of the big event concert. And we have a official translation of that letter. You can find that over there. And all this and more news at thecooljew.com Stay tuned for next week to another podcast another person another cool Jew and now we're going to bring you a song and that's going to do it up for this week thank you for tuning in
ma 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 na na ne ye oh ah ma 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 no ye 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 piti o visa yo ba ve ba do in da ti do mi do 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 da ma da pria do no zo ba do ya ti ba do Bam dum 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 bam d